Our last, but not least, uh, speaker is Alberto Ramirez. Um, he's, we put him last because he's from Tykert um, Company, and I think that he's another speaker that's sort of on the ground um, and can give us some really good information on, on you know, the materials and the process um, that are used for, for sediment removal. Um, he's a project manager for mining and environmental engineering at Tykert Materials in Sacramento, California, where he identifies and evaluates new and current water discharge requirements and is involved in river rehabilitation for sustainable and ethical aggregate mining. Ramirez has been with the company since 2003. Prior, he worked for the mine management of Cal Sierra Development Operations and Yuba Dredges on the Yuba Gold Fields and has held management positions related to gold mining in Brazil and Peru. Ramirez graduated from mining engineering from the Montana College of Minerals. Welcome. Good morning. Still got 10 minutes before it's noon. <clears throat> when Easy invited me to speak, and she said, yeah, Alberto, you can do it, you know, 15 minutes. I said, oh, man, 15 minutes is a long time. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I have only one slide. It's, it's very simple to, to follow. And uh, I didn't really put any uh, mining method on the, on, oops, it went away. There you go. So I really, I, I really didn't put any method. You know, I just said mining. Because what we want to accomplish here is for the uh, reservoirs, is how to get the sand and gravel and heavy metals. I won't even call mercury. You know, it's just heavy metals. In a way that is feasible because after I saw the number of uh, $40 a cubic yard, man, that's, uh, that's pretty good. If somebody pay us $40 per cubic yard, we're making a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so without putting any, any numbers on, on this, I just wanna you know, uh, show you guys how the flow sheet that I envision should be for any reservoir, okay? You have the mining method, it could be dry by trucks and excavators, it could be, you know, dredging, uh, clamshell, drag line, several types of mining. Then you, then you recover the sand and gravel, and then you separate it, and that has a price, and that can be sold. So right there, you know, you make money on this first product. Then the second one, you know, is in the Sierras, w when you process sand and gravel, you actually, what you end up is uh, what they call black sand. And the black sand contains the heavy metals which, and minerals, which will be iron, and different types of iron. It will be mercury, it will be gold, it will be even uh, the uh, famous earth minerals. So once you obtain the black sands, then there are very, very uh, different ways to uh, extract the black sands. Uh, most common over you know, placer mining, which is, this is what it falls into placer mining, not hard rock mining, have been a series of jigs. With a jig is a machine that what it does is just by gravity fed, just extracts the, you know, light sand from the uh, heavy metals, which it called the black sand. So in, the, in this process, we'll, we'll extract the black sand and also, at that time, you'll have the regular sand that could be also sold for construction. <clears throat> On the black sands, the only thing that you can, uh, you can obtain here will be the heavy metals that could be gold, it could be uh, you know, uh, mercury, and then you'll have the magnetite that has a value as iron ore base, and the hematite is, you know, also iron, you know, ore, which all, 
all gold has a, a pretty, you know, pretty good price and is, you know, using agriculture, is using for, you know, uh, cement plants. So you can find, you know, a uh, home for all this. Then you end up having the sand and then the sand, you divide sand and silt. Now, <clears throat> uh, in several places that I have work and several places that have tour mines all over, you know, the U.S. and also uh, outside the U.S., <clears throat> in places that you don't have water, like in California, because believe it or not, here in California, very spoiled in the sense that, you know, most of the sand and gravel operations use water. In Arizona, for example, they don't have water. So they do have what they call a closed circuit. So they only add water for evaporation. So in, in Arizona, they have uh, water in big uh, containers and the, the only thing they use is a bell press to extract the silt out of it. And then when they extract the silt, they end up stacking those silt at 8%, which it, the silt can be conveyed. And then if you, you know, in the Sierras, if we analyze what type of silt we end up having, then we certainly can figure out if those silt can go into a landfill or it can be, you know, go back to, you know, agriculture or figure out what to do. You, you can go back also to cover the, the land so it doesn't erode in some of the mines. And because it's already dry at 8%, it can be conveyed. Doesn't even have to be truck. It can be just conveyed to the sites. And and some of the silts also in, you know, it could be converted into tiles. I mean, there's a company out of, you know, uh, Grass Valley, Nevada City, that they, uh, they have, it's very successful, out of Combi Lake, the silts of Combi Lake, converted into tiles that for, you know, to be laid out in, in homes. So, um, the, the key thing of the whole process on, on this, uh, you know, reservoir mining or dredging or whatever is to contain the water. So when we are analyzing what type of equipment should be used, it has to be so the water in, in any moment really escapes out of the process until it gets to a holding tank where it can be cleaned up for heavy metals before it goes back to the reservoir. That's the beauty of using, you know, belt presses because it will be part of the circuit. And then you, we will assure, you know, that the water goes back to the reservoir is nice and clean. So, and this, a model like this, it can be sized to depending of, you know, the reservoir it needs to be clean. And obviously, um, the cost is very important, but uh, I hope it, you know, we don't end up with a cost of you know, $10, ten dollars a cubic yard that, you know, that will kill any, any project like that. I think uh, we can do it a lot better, especially if we find hidden you know, benefits, like Liz was saying. You know, what is the, the cost of having more water in the reservoir? What's the cost of getting the mercury out of the system? What's the sand and gravel um, benefits of taking it out to market? Um, the gold, uh, the mercury, all that could add value to lower the cost of the entire operation. And that's pretty much the goal on having a closed circuit that, that, like that. That's it. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Alberto? Yes, Toby. And then we'll open it up, open it up to the whole panel in a moment. 
I was just wondering uh, if, on the, the question of cost, what, uh, if you had everything developed, what do you think would be a reasonable ballpark cost? What would be a reasonable cost? Yeah. Without, you know, uh, we will have to, you know, it, it's very, if, very critical when you ask, uh, you know, somebody who worked for a construction material company, you know, what's the cost? You know, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, if, if, if my cost will be $10 a yard, I won't be working for that company. So I think uh, it, it definitely has to be lower than that because um, I, I, don't, I don't see, you know, uh, the cost to be that expensive, especially if you have the benefit of some of the resources that you can put out to market. I mean, it, it depends on what deposit is. That's, that's why I didn't put any, you know, site name or any gravel or anything, because every mine is completely different. There, there, are two, there are not two mines the same in any part of the world. So part of what a mine engineer has to do is look at the site in particular and figure out what works for that particular site with equipment and science that is out there. So the cost, um, you know, is very tricky. But uh, like I said, you know, at uh, $40 or, or, or $10 a cubic yard, is, uh, it's a lot. For example, when I used to work for uh, the dredging operation in, you know, in the Yuba gold fields, the moving of, of uh, dredging material, it was 75 cents a cubic yard. So, <laughs> You know, it, uh, uh, you know, that you can extrapolate the, yes, we were moving at that time 8,000 cubic yards a day in a 24-hour, seven-day operation. But, you know, the cost was less than a dollar, you know, if you add it up. 